Whether you're a newbie or a veteran cruiser, there are certain things you should never do on a cruise ship. Many of these prohibited actions can actually get you kicked off the vessel, and we don't want that to happen. So to help ensure you know exactly how to behave, we put together this video of the 20 things you should never do on a cruise up next. Welcome aboard cruisers. I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time. And let's just dive right into this list of things you should never ever do on a cruise ship. And if you want your cruise to be smooth sailing, one thing you probably want to do is avoid interactions with the onboard security. But one surefire way to get a knock on your door is to throw something overboard. One of the top safety announcements that you'll hear on any cruise is to not throw any items overboard. This is strictly enforced by the cruise lines. There's a variety of reasons why you should never throw anything overboard, not only for safety reasons, but also for environmental concerns. Throwing a cigarette overboard on an upper deck could result in a fire or injury to guests on lower decks. Polluting of any kind can also result in a fine, as cruise lines are committed to sustainability. In the worst case scenario, guests can even be kicked off the ship for violating this policy. In this instance, the guests would be required to pay all expenses to return home and would not receive a cruise refund. Additionally, the cruise lines may prohibit you from sailing with them in the future if you're caught throwing anything off the side of the ship. Similar rules apply to climbing, sitting, or standing on the railings on the side of cruise ships. These actions are strictly prohibited in the guest conduct policy. And it doesn't matter if you're just trying to take a photo or just fooling around. This is also very dangerous. And you've probably all heard stories in recent years about guests being kicked off the ship for not complying with these rules. While it might seem like the perfect place to take a selfie, it's actually really dangerous. Additionally, propping up children on railings is also very dangerous and likewise should never be done. We don't care the reason, whether it's on a lower deck, on your balcony, you're holding on to something, or the ship isn't moving, you're docked. Moral of the story is just don't do it. Again, this could lead you to being banned from the cruise line for life, or even worse, could result in serious injury or potentially even death. On most cruise lines, smoking is only allowed in designated areas of the ship. These designated areas may be indoors, outdoors, or both. Now, some cruise lines are more restrictive than others. So if you are a smoker, we suggest you contact your cruise line to see where on the cruise ship you are allowed to smoke. You can also ask staff to point out the designated smoking areas once on board the ship. However, smoking is strictly prohibited in your stateroom and on your balcony on a majority of cruise lines. This also includes vaping and e-cigarettes. And as you would expect, the cruise lines do take these rules very seriously. Remember, cruise ships have cameras everywhere. If you're caught smoking somewhere, whether it's your balcony, your stateroom, or another venue that you're not allowed to smoke in, you will be assessed a fine and even can be kicked off the ship. Of course, this goes for those cigar smokers as well. There's actually even stricter rules about where you can smoke cigars. While some cruise lines like Norwegian Cruise Line and some Princess Cruises ships have cigar lounges, these type of venues are actually not very common on Martin cruise ships. While nothing is 100% effective in eliminating your risk of illness on land or at sea, there are some simple ways to avoid getting sick when traveling. The number one way is to practice proper hygiene. Hand washing, or washy washy as it's called on many cruise lines, is the most effective way to prevent the spread of disease. You should wash your hands frequently and thoroughly with soap and water. The CDC also recommends you lather your hands with soap and warm water for at least 20 seconds an easy trick is to sing the happy birthday song to yourself twice. If you're not able to wash your hands on most cruise ships, you will find hand sanitizing stations essentially everywhere, but especially in front of restaurants and many public venues. So make sure to grab a couple dabs and to lather your hands quite well until your hands feel dry. Even if you feel like the staff's consistent requests are a bit over the top, you can never be too cautious. This is especially true before eating. Nothing is worse than seeing a person bypass a hand washing station, go right into the buffet, and then grab utensils right before you. Knowing your cruise line's policy about bringing beverages on board could also help bypass some potentially uncomfortable situations. 
Most cruise lines do allow passengers to take two 750 milliliter bottles of wine per stateroom on board the ship for a cruise. This is the only outside alcohol that's allowed onto most ships. While many guests try to sneak other alcohol, like bottles of liquor on board the ship, or attempt to use devices like rum runners, we would never recommend it. If you're considering sneaking alcohol in your luggage to avoid purchasing a drink package, be aware that your luggage is scanned by security prior to being taken on the ship. At minimum, the alcohol will get confiscated. However, you could also risk being denied to sail on the cruise, especially if you give the staff a hard time about it. This is also true at ports of call. If you purchase alcohol at a port of call, when you return to the ship, the cruise line will register your purchases and store them for you. And at the end of the cruise, return that duty-free liquor that you purchase either ashore or in the shops on the ship. Likewise, when it comes to packing, many items are prohibited like weapons, illegal drugs, and fireworks, which should hopefully seem pretty obvious. But this also includes some items that you might be thinking of packing. Items like candles, pool toys, or household appliances like hot plates, coffee makers, or electronic blankets are also not allowed on cruise ships. Further, regardless of your state laws, you're not allowed to bring illicit drugs like marijuana or marijuana infused products. Even if you use these for medical purposes, the cruise line will confiscate them. Sometimes other prohibited items are not so obvious. Clothes irons and steamers are forbidden on all cruise lines. This is why we always pack plenty of downy wrinkle release. Additionally, traditional surge protectors are not allowed on cruise ships either. Though you can opt for cruise approved ones, which we always pack in our carry on. If you're looking to be called out by the cruise line on day one of your cruise, here's the thing you could do, not attend your mustard drill. Mustard drill is a mandatory maritime safety exercise conducted by all the cruise lines, usually prior to leaving the home port. During this drill, safety information is provided to all guests in the event of an emergency. This includes a proper way to don a life jacket, escape routes, and lifeboat locations. All guests have a designated muster station based on the location of their staterooms. Usually designated with a letter and number, this is the place you would report in the event of a real life evacuation. Many cruise lines have moved towards digital safety drills since the cruise restart, and this makes it super simple and easy to complete your muster drill. Cruises need to watch a video, which is usually available on the cruise line's app or on your stateroom television. Then after you complete watching the video, you just check in at your actual muster station in person where the crew quickly review a few key pointers, scan your key card, and then you're free to enjoy the rest of the first day of your cruise. Frequent cruisers all know the term chair hog. We have all witnessed individuals wake up at the crack of dawn to place towels on prime loungers near the pool. These cruisers are securing their spots in the sun for the day. This would be fine if they actually used the chairs. However, chair hogs think nothing of leaving their empty chairs for hours on end while off doing other activities. So obviously this is not fair to other passengers on the ship. When you arrive at the pool deck by 8 a.m. and all the chairs are already claimed but empty, it's extremely frustrating. Luckily, cruise lines have started to catch on to this inconsiderate trend. Some lines have systems in place where crew will remove towels from chairs that are vacant for greater than 30 minutes. While enforcement can be difficult, you can do your part by pointing out these situations to crew members. While being a chair hog won't get you thrown off the ship, it could embarrass you. Only head out to the pool deck when you and the rest of your family are ready to enjoy some sun. Likewise, if something doesn't go your way during the cruise, try to avoid taking it out on the staff. The hardworking crew do their best to make your vacation as enjoyable as possible. Issues can arise during your trip. Whether you are overcharged for an item, given the wrong drink, things happen. Please stay calm. Being rude to the staff will get you nowhere, except maybe kicked off the ship and some pretty mean looks from your fellow passengers. The best way to handle any issue is to speak with guest services or the appropriate management in a calm and collected manner. The same goes true for interacting with other passengers. Everyone's on board the ship to have a good time. So there's no sense getting into an altercation with a disgruntled, possibly drunk fellow passenger. 
just ignore them and move along. Admittedly, we're over planners, and we usually book our cruises months in advance. Likewise, pre-cruise, we usually log into the cruise planner and book items like shore excursions, dinner reservations, and if possible, shows depending on the ship we're sailing on. And we highly recommend you do the same. You should never wait until the last minute to make your reservations. This is especially true if you're sailing on some of the newest and largest cruise ships in the world. These can include dining reservations at specialty restaurants, or even pre-booking a few my time dining spots if applicable, or dine my way dining or freestyle dining, depending on the cruise line. Popular restaurants and ideal dining times do book up quickly. This also pertains to some entertainment reservations. As we mentioned on mega ships from brands like Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Line, some nightly shows require reservations. If you can make reservations pre-cruise, do that. If not, on day one of your cruise, make sure you find the box office or the designated area where shows can be reserved and to book all your shows. Also, we recommend booking your shore excursions in advance too. Again, the popular tours and activities will likely be sold out by the time you board the ship. Cruisers are usually able to make these reservations and purchase pre-cruise on the Cruise Line's website. We have all seen pier runners. Many have probably even heckled them as these tardy cruisers race towards the ship before it pulls away from port. It's understandable that you could lose track of time if you're enjoying yourself at the beach or in a local bar. However, whatever you do, don't miss the all aboard time. This can be a very costly cruise mistake. Before going ashore in a port of call, always double check the time you need to be back on the ship. Also, be sure to note if the ship's time is the same as local time or if it's different. Just because your ship has entered a new time zone doesn't necessarily mean that the ship's time is the same as the local time. It's always a good idea to set the time to manual mode on your phone or smartwatch, as sometimes it will adjust to time zone changes, and actually sometimes it doesn't. We also suggest setting an alarm on your phone to ensure that you don't miss the ship. We also suggest planning to be back at the ship before the designated time. This will buy you some time in the event of an unexpected delay, like an accident or traffic. Remember, the ship will not wait for you if you're late. The only instance that a ship will wait a reasonable amount of time is if a cruise line sponsored excursion is running late. While cruise line attire is rather laid back, there is a dress code for certain venues on board the ship. This applies to venues like specialty dining restaurants and even the main dining room. Showing up to dinner in a bathing suit, white t-shirt or tank top, or a baseball cap is not allowed. It will certainly be frowned upon by other guests, so be sure to dress accordingly. Of course, some cruise lines enforce these rules more than others. Further, certain activities on board the ship might have a dress code as well. So review these restrictions prior to your cruise to be sure you pack all the necessary items. Some activities may require closed toed shoes like laser tag or ropes course. Others might also require sleeved shirts for safety. Additionally, some activities like drop slides on Norwegian Cruise Line require you to remove all jewelry and accessories, even wedding rings. For those who are new to cruising, you may not know that your luggage will not arrive to your stateroom until later in the afternoon on embarkation day. This means that you should pack all your essential items in a carry-on so you'll have immediate access to them. So you certainly don't want to forget to pack a well-stocked carry-on with you for your cruise. This carry-on should include items like your travel docs, smartphones, any medications, suntan lotion, and yes, even your bathing suit. The pools are open on that first day. Cruise lines now have apps to make reservations, enter your stateroom, make mobile purchases, and even complete your muster drill. So the days of going on a cruise, unwinding, and being detached from your devices, well, those are long gone. Again, as more cruisers are taking more and more electronics on board, a cruise approved power strip for charging devices is essential. Outlets are very limited in many cruise cabins. We know you are on vacation and you want to have a good time. But just because most of the food is included in your cruise fare, it doesn't mean you have to eat it all. We're not big fans of cruise ship buffets for many reasons. One of them is that it leads to overeating. Now, we would never tell you to skip dessert, because obviously we don't either. 
However, try opting for a healthier menu option like a salad or grilled chicken or a salmon entree to offset the added calories of that chocolate lava cake. Yes, the same rationale goes for a cruise drink package. You shouldn't feel like you need to order that extra drink just to break even for the day. Further, if you aren't worried about your bar tab, it's that much easier to order just one more drink. If you've been out in the sun all day or haven't been consuming enough water, you could make yourself sick or you could end up with a hangover the next day. And we would hate for you to miss out on the rest of your cruise because you're not feeling well. We get it. You want to get your money's worth, but you also want to remember your cruise, right? One costly thing you should never do on a cruise is forget to put your phone in airplane mode. In fact, one of the first things cruisers should do on embarkation day is to place your cell phone in airplane mode. This will avoid potentially hefty fees from your carrier. Even if you don't plan to use your phone to make calls or send text messages, remember your smartphone has auto software updates, app updates, push notifications, and more that all use data. Once your cruise ship sets sail from the port, you'll begin to incur a barrage of roaming fees for such data usage, even if you're not actively using your phone. You can still use the cruise lines app and the ship's Wi-Fi while you are in airplane mode. You can also take your phone out of airplane mode when docked at a port of call if you want to use your cell coverage at that time. Of note, even if you have an international plan, it does not work while out to sea. You will definitely want to dine in the main dining room at least some nights of your cruise. The main dining room on all cruise lines offers a rotational three course menu with some of the best food you will find on the ship. Most cruise lines offer an early and late seating for what they call traditional dining, as well as some form of anytime dining or more flexible dining. If you're scheduled for a set dining time, please be courteous to staff and show up on time. The wait staff in the MDR are required to serve the first seating, then turn over the table in a short period of time for that second seating. Then they need to clean to ready the dining room for breakfast the next morning. If you're rude and you show up too late, it will certainly create more work for your waitstaff. Plus, the host could always deny you seating if you show up way past your assigned dining time. Of course, showing up 10 or 15 minutes late is acceptable, but showing up much later should be avoided. While a passport's not required for U.S. citizens who sail on closed loop cruises, these are cruises that begin and end in the same U.S. port, like, say, Miami, Florida, or Seattle, Washington, we always recommend having one for your cruise. Yes, technically, U.S. citizens can cruise to a variety of locales without one, like the Bahamas, Bermuda, Canada, New England, the Caribbean, the Mexican Riviera, and more. However, just because you don't need a passport to go on the cruise doesn't mean that you might not need one to enter one or more of the ports of call during your trip. Further, if something happens and you miss a ship, in a port of call, or you need to unexpectedly leave the ship in a foreign country, a passport would be required to re-enter the United States by air. In the event of illness or injury, travelers without a passport would need to visit the nearest U.S. embassy or consulate to apply for a temporary visa to re-enter the United States. It's just a lot of work. You don't want to do it. <laughs> now, this next thing you should never do on a cruise is a little controversial. That's okay. I'm fine talking about it. Cruise gratuities are service charges that are not included in a standard cruise fare on most contemporary cruise lines that are charged to all guests, usually automatically across all stateroom categories. And it usually runs about $15 to $20 per person per day for all members of your stateroom. Yes, even your kids. These charges are a means to reward the hardworking crew for the excellent service provided during your trip. While cruise gratuities can be modified or removed, we never recommend that cruisers do it. This is a small and well-deserved token of appreciation to all the crew on board the ship. In fact, many cruisers choose to tip above and beyond this rate, and we're some of them. We at least bring a couple hundred dollars on every cruise. One of our recommendations for cruisers who do not live within driving distance of the cruise port has always been to arrive a day early. If you're flying to your ship's home port, we suggest doing so at least one day prior to your cruise. This will help to alleviate any stress surrounding flight delays, cancellations, missed connectors, you get it. This is especially true if you're flying in the winter from locations 
where snow and ice might impact your travels. We always fly a day early and then secure a pre-cruise hotel stay. This ensures that we get a good night's sleep and are well rested for embarkation day. No one wants to start off a cruise vacation feeling tired or jet lagged. On the other end, you should never book an early flight on disembarkation day. The time you are allowed to disembark the ship at the end of your cruise varies by cruise line. It's also impacted by the weather, ship technical difficulties, receiving clearance from port customs, and a multitude of other reasons. Thus, to ensure a stress-free disembarkation, you should book a later day flight. The cruise lines recommend that passengers avoid booking any flight before noontime. While we have booked earlier flights on some occasions, we generally agree with that. Also depends on the port of call. Some ports are further away from the nearest major airport than others. We would much rather be too early sitting in an airport than having the headache of rescheduling a missed flight. Now that you know the 20 things you should never do on a cruise, we need to find you the perfect cruise ship. Well, lucky for you, Heidi and I have tested out the nine newest cruise ships and we rate them all right here on YouTube. Find out which ship had the best dining, the best stateroom, best entertainment, and more. Our look at the top nine newest cruise ships will help ensure your next cruise is smooth sailing.